How was he received by Catholics? How was Chester received by Catholics? Yeah. Oh, they they were hurting themselves by crowing so much. They were so happy to have landed Chesterton <laughs> in the church. But I could tell you there was one fear on the part of Catholics too, that somehow Chesterton was going to change, that he wouldn't be the same witty, joyful guy, that somehow the church would ruin him. Yeah. And so there was that that was actually expressed by several writers, uh, Catholic writers, when Chesterton became Catholic. But for the most part, it was ecstatic. Uh, they were, there was just such mm. such great joy, especially from leading Catholic figures and, and bishops and archbishops. Now, he was probably aware of sort of intellectual heavyweights within the church, even as an Anglican, but did he find kind of fellowship among other intellectual Catholics once he came in? Well, the one he always w was in fellowship with was Hilaire Belloc, who okay, was... yeah. Tell us know, about their relationship. Intellectual giant. And first of all, tell us who Hilaire Belloc <laughs> is for those who don't know. Yeah, so, um, you know, <clears throat> it's it's funny how history works. Sometimes, you know, there can be generations without intellectual giants. And here you had two who were best friends at the same time, both of them profound and and uh, giant intellects who wrote prolifically about all the same things and, you know, uh, public figures, outspoken. Belloc uh, was was more political than, than Chester. He actually was a member of parliament for a while. Mm -hmm. He was a very witty poet uh, and... Uh, and more of a gruff character. That's what I was going to say. Yeah. A little more cutting, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Ch Chesterton's the, the the good cop, and <laughs> Belloc's the bad cop. All the all the way. Uh, okay. Yeah, I think Joseph Pierce does it. Explains it best that um, he says Chesterton was was polite to people who were rude to him, and Belloc was rude to people <laughs> who were polite to him. You know, the, the, the example, I, I told you the earlier story about the, the the woman accosting Chester. Why aren't you out at the front? You know, and being witty in his response and whereas Belloc was at a, at a mass once and yes, I know that. the, <laughs> the usher comes up to him and says sir at this point of the mass we stand and or we kneel or whatever whatever it was Belloc wasn't doing it and <laughs> Belloc turned to him and said go to hell <laughs> and uh, the usher says oh I'm sorry sir I didn't know you were Catholic <laughs> and uh, and so he uh <laughs> he, the, the other thing about Belloc is he really mm. he, w he was a man who dealt with much more tragedy personally than uh, mm. than Chesterton had to deal with. Although Chesterton had his own own share of tragedy, I think that's sometimes downplayed uh, because he was so joyful and and dealt with the tragic events in his life so well. Mm. But Belloc <clears throat> lost his wife at a young age. He lost a son in World War One and another son in World War Two. I mean, just unimaginable a heartache that he went through. And uh, and so there was always this uh, a weight of sorrow he was carrying, and yet the their friendship they always defended each other in public. Uh, the great line of of Chesterton is that uh, Belloc and I are completely different. We just happen to agree on politics and religion. <laughs> <laughs> and I think you know uh, Shaw characterized them as the sh the Chester Belloc that they were just one four footed beast. Really? But they they were really two Chester different Bellock. men. And, it was like a horror story. Uh, yeah, yeah. The Chester Bellock. Yeah, the Chester Bellock. And I think the, the they they can be put together too easily sometimes because they were living at the same time, defending the same things, and were friends. Uh, and and Did so they become friends after his conversion. Oh no, that friendship started way before his conversion. They became they they met each other in about 1902, and 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 Chesterton was so impressed with with Bellock. He he said he. He was. He thought he was one of the most intelligent men he'd ever met, and he he came into the room with the smell of danger. <laughs> so he was this forceful personality right. to go with it, and yeah. uh, I think in many ways Chesterton was in awe of Belloc. But Belloc, in turn, realized that there was nothing in the world like like Chesterton either, and in, he wrote these great, wonderful poetic defenses of. Of Chesterton, the remote and ineffectual Don who dare attack my Chesterton. <laughs> I was unaware. <laughs> really funny, and uh, um, and then you know the bait, the the really great irony, Matt, was that Ch Belloc never thought Chesterton would become Catholic, and never even believed that he should become Catholic. He he almost felt he was more effective hmm. without being a member of the church and defending it as an outsider that somehow gave him more credibility 
and and really was going to counsel someone against trying to talk Chesterton into becoming a Catholic. And when when Chesterton was received, Belloc was absolutely shocked, and of course then was was very thankful. And he 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 wrote he wrote to Gilbert saying, "I, I still can't believe this this wonderful news." And mm. and so so they 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 shared that. And of course the. At, at Chesterton's funeral, Belloc was fi- found at the nearby pub, you know, lit- literally weeping into his beer. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I think for men to be best friends or to be very close friends, the, the two of them have to almost want to be like the other one in one respect. You know, they have to really admire each yeah, other. Yeah, that's a very good point. They, they really do admire each other, and that's, that's why they continue to support each other all the way. Yeah. I got to tell you guys about my new favorite app. It's called Ascension, and it's by Ascension Press. This is the number one Bible study app, in my opinion. And uh, you can go to ascensionpress.com slash frad. Go there, uh, and so that way they know that we sent you. It is absolutely fantastic. It has the entire Bible there, very well laid out. The the whole Bible is read to you by Father Mike Schmidt, so just sections of the Bible. It has the catechism there. It's cross-referenced absolutely beautifully. It's really actually quite difficult to explain to you how good this is. Just download it and check it out for yourself. It even has over 1,600 frequently asked questions about scripture. So if you go to Genesis 1, you might have a question about evolution. Well, there's a drop down right there. You can read an article that'll help you understand it. Um, I went through it with the guys at Ascension the other day and my mouth, my jaw was just, it had, it was dropped. It, it was absolutely amazing. Um, it's had tens of thousands of five-star reviews. Again, go to ascensionpress.com slash frad. It also has all of their amazing Bible studies. So I remember back in the day I had a big DVD case of Jeff Caven's Bible studies. Well, it's all there on the app. So go download it right now. Please go to ascensionpress.com slash frad.